Hi everyone, welcome back to High School Science 101. Today is another sciencey stuff video because the last one that I did is the most popular video that I've done so far. And it's also an excuse for me to play with some cool stuff. So let's get started. First up, we have ferrofluid. And ferrofluid's made of tiny magnetic iron particles suspended in a carrier liquid like water. It was developed in the 60s by NASA as a type of fuel that could be drawn into a fuel inlet without having to rely on gravity. And each tiny particle has a coating that stops it from clumping together. Typically, uh, it's made of 5% magnetic solids, 10% of this anti-clumping coating, and 85% of it is made up of the carrier liquid. Some of its uses involve uh, lubrication in machinery that involves moving magnets, and also in loudspeakers and hard drives as well. Some of its future uses could be in nanosurgery when you're trying to separate healthy tissue from diseased tissue or tumors. And also in medicines, you could suspend drugs in ferrofluid and get the patient to swallow that. And then you can selectively release that medication just by exposing the patient to a magnetic field. Next up, we have something that looks and feels and behaves like normal putty that you would play with as a kid. But when we hold a magnet up to it, you'll notice that it has a, a unique characteristic. This is actually very similar to our ferrofluid because it does consist of tiny magnetic particles, but instead of being suspended in a carrier fluid like water, they're suspended in this putty and allows us to do some pretty interesting experiments with it.
Lastly, we have the 83rd element, bismuth. And bismuth is very unusual for a few reasons. Firstly, it forms these strange shapes when you melt it down and extract it as it's cooling. And it has this sort of rainbow reflective tinge to it. And that's because of the oxidation that happens. So it's a reaction that happens between the bismuth metal and the oxygen that creates that weird rainbow sort of color that you can see. It's also one of the only non-toxic heavy metals. Other heavy metals like lead and arsenic are very toxic and even antimony is another heavy metal but uh, they used to make goblets out of it in medieval times to induce vomiting, I guess for medical purposes. Bismuth also creates a blue flame when you hold it over a fire and it's very very slightly radioactive. Only recently we discovered that its half-life is over a billion times the age of the universe which means it is radioactive but only very slightly. And that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. You might have noticed that the resolution in this video was much higher than my other videos. And that's because I went out and bought a new camera because the sensor in my other camera died and I've been using a lower resolution travel camera since then. So enjoy higher resolution videos from now on and I will see you next time.